Hello everybody and welcome to a video about Dwarf Fortress. This is a guided tour of Arch Crystal by creator of Arch Crystal, Sethodos. Uh, most of you probably are aware that a couple of weeks ago I've uploaded both parts of Arch Crystal, Arch Crystal and Arch Crystal The Final Chapters, which is a very large piece of Dwarf Fortress fanfiction that goes alongside of this. So if you haven't watched those already, I do kind of recommend you do that, but it's not necessary to just simply gawk at the insanity that is this fortress. So uh, without further ado, let's dive in. Well, I'm Sethatos. I made Arch Crystal. Um, I started this fortress, so would have been 2015, I guess. It was actually only the third fortress I'd ever done in DF, but I felt like I kind of got the hang of it by then. And then, yeah, why I did it for so long? I mean, I don't know. I, I remember looking and seeing, you know, what was it? I think it was Flare Channel, one of those fortresses. And he went for 200 years. But that was back in an earlier version of DF where the rest of the world didn't really do anything. Like, it was all self-contained. I think it was in 34. So when Tarn came out with, you know, the 40 version and the world actually, you know, advanced outside your fortress i thought it'd be cool to to have something that had longevity and you know had generations of dwarves where you know you'd be happy to have children in your fortress because they would grow up and do things and then yeah i just sort of really leaned into it because i found found especially in that version of the, of the game in 4024 it was really easy to defend yourself like Back then, there was no stress, really. Like, stress was almost taken out of the game. And, like, the threats, as soon as you figure them out, they're they're simple. And so, yeah, I just wanted to um, wanted to have something that lasted a while. And, and I caught cave dragons at the beginning, like, I think within the first 10 years. And I started breeding them. And I looked online on the weekends, like, oh, okay, they take a thousand years to mature. So I said, well, you know, we'll try for 200 and see if they uh, see if they grow to a good size. And they did, and it was great. And so I just, yeah, I just kept going, really. That's about it. So at a point, it just kind of became almost like Stockholm Syndrome. It's like, well, this is the fortress I've built for myself. Might as well live here. Well, yeah, and like you get to a point, too, where, you know, you want to try new things. Well, you can just try the new things in this fortress. like, And like, as for starting a new one... You know, I figured, you know, once you're like 200 some odd years in, you're like, well, I'm never going to get to this point again. I might as well just keep going with this. And yeah, no, I did, couldn't play another game, <laughs> to be honest. Like, you know, when you have to finish a game to start another one, it was all DF for years. So I, I guess kind of my, my, my goal for this video is to kind of have like a little discussion about the fort, I suppose, uh, alongside of like kind of a guided tour of the fort. So I'm, I'm just sitting here on uh, layer zero, you know, just ground level. And um, I, I know that probably a large portion of the people watching this video aren't going to really uh, recognize what all of these icons are. So let's let's talk a little bit about this kind of wall of dragons because um, this kind of entry like walkway, I, I see I see a lot of bridges that are currently held up, uh, clear glass uh, block floors, and then each one of these little spaces has a trained war dragon. Um, <laughs> so uh, how did you collect these dragons, if I can ask? And um, do they stay trained like indefinitely in this version? And um, what, how effective are they during sieges? So the reason I did this was because um, around like year 450, like I started raiding everything. So like I had my dwarves go out and conquer sites, but there was an equipment bug in the game that, you know, would duplicate a piece of equipment. So like if they were, you know, they could come back, it would crash the game. So I had to disband my entire military. Like if you look at all the dwarves now, there's no military. So I came up with this because I had um, a breeding pair of dragons. Basically, you know, by this point I'd caught every beast in, in the entire world. So I'm like, okay, well I'll breed some dragons and then just set them up at the entrance for sieges so that when the sieges comes, you know, the drawbridges drop and then, you know, they breathe fire on everything. Each like single square tile where the, one of those dragons are is also um it's a pasture and a training zone so it it just sets to any trainer for the dragons so you know like once a year a trainer will come up and train them and they're all masters so i mean it doesn't take very long but then i had to figure out a way to um get the drawbridges to work because the dragon fire will basically destroy anything 
Mm-hmm. So I had to make the drawbridges out of ash because it's got no burning point. <laughs> so this is back when you could use ash blocks or ash bars to uh, make stuff. And so oh, the, wow. you know you pull a lever and then the mechanisms are actually made out of um, what is it divine metal that we got in a raid. And so because I think adamantine wouldn't work or something. I'm trying to remember. But then yeah, so you know the the. The army would come in the center there, and then, you know, you drop the drawbridges, and then they breathe fire on everything. It sucks, though, because they also, like, shields will block dragon fire, even mm-hmm. if they're wood. It was great when the elves used to come, because they used to ride on war animals. So, <laughs> while the elves would block stuff with their shields, the fire, the war animals would catch on fire beneath them, and everything would burn. It was great. I, I guess that's why there's a couple of these, uh, like, uh, wood furnaces made out of clear glass blocks just a couple layers above them then, hey? There's lava above that entrance, too, so there's another lever. And basically, you pull it, and just the lava drops down, so it'll it'll take care of anything else. So that's, yeah. that's basically what the late defense of the fortress was, by necessity. It's just... I, I, I've, I've ended up going that route with many forts, either. Like, especially in older versions, like, I think a lot of people forget now or uh, never knew but like there was a point where stress was pretty brutal there's there's a lot of discussions now always about like oh i need to keep my dwarves happy it's like good luck a couple of versions ago because there there was portions where if like a dwarf saw like a raindrop once they would have like (laughs) panic attacks for the rest of their life or if they saw a dead body once it was the same thing so like the, especially in older versions, I used to just use lava for almost everything just out of necessity for cleaning purposes. Well, and it could be like a tooth, you know, they would see a tooth and that would be a dead body to them and they would freak out. But, you know, it was because I think I remember, you know, it was like there was no stress for a little while. And then to overcompensate, they just went really hard on stress and totally. then it was terrible. So I'm just kind of moving up through the top of the tower now, um, just kind of looking at the the full layout how long did it take to put this tower together? And like, what did did you have a particular design in mind or were you just kind of winging it while putting it together? I had kind of um, like a sort of design, like the four kind of towers on the corners of it. I wanted it to look like a, almost like a chandelier sort of. So, um, but it was really hard because like this is an evil biome, right? So like mm-hmm. we have these clouds of wicked soot that come in and turn everyone into, you know, mindless killing machines. So I had to be really careful, you know, and just usually disable the auto pause, but like I had to put it back in for this because the clouds would come in and like if you didn't burrow your dwarves fast enough, like they'd get toasted right away. So yeah, just, you know, being careful and like, you know, the top, the top I didn't care so much about, like it's the bottom (laughs) that I was really interested in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we're going to start moving down now and I'd just like to point out that there is a sand pair wood arrow on your roof. Um, oh really (laughs) yeah (laughs) i it's just kind of on one of the 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 top portions of of the roof so Uh, so, someone managed to get something up there but um good for the elves (laughs) i'm 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 gonna start moving down into the fortress now so like um i'm kind of working under the assumption that like people watching this video are like at least relatively aware of the fortress but very quickly i think people are going to start to realize as i start moving down that there's this entire structure is made of clear glass there is a lot of it and it kind of goes forever so so let's talk a little bit about this uh clear glass spire i'm just hitting the river levels and moving down into i guess the old fortress yeah so the the river level was was tough too because like that you know we had to dig up so uh, i don't know if you can see there's like a few like old channels and stuff in there i had um magma pumps for those because i had to dam off the river um with magma i mean like lava is the easiest thing to use so like Mm -hmm. like dam dam the the first river there at the top and then the top river over there at the left and so that I could build up through it. But then I also had aquifers to go up through, which were even tougher. So I had to slowly dig through. The, and this is back before light aquifers, so they were all heavy. So mm-hmm. I had to dig up through the aquifer, pour lava all over it, and then dig it out again so that I could get the aquifer to stop. And that way I could, like, raise the glass tower, you know, from the bottom. But, um, yeah, no, that was really, really tough. And then it was great when I was finally able to undam the rivers and like get the the water to flow through again that was fantastic but um yeah that that was probably the hardest part about building this 
I, I built something similar once in my fortress long death yeah. where I, except I did it out of green glass and I didn't go anywhere near as deep. And I think it took me about like 70 years in game and then an additional 10 to fill it with lava. Um, yeah, I'd say that's about the same for this too. And it, it was, it was a struggle. Fortunately, I, I, I didn't have the aquifer problem, but I did have like 25 Z levels of caverns to build through. <laughs> so oh. that, that was kind of painful having to cons individually construct the scaffolding to put the towers together. But um, like I'm, I'm, I'm currently kind of just slowly moving my way through the old fortress and I keep hitting the like help button because uh, I'm, I'm having to relearn muscle memory. How long did you did did you live in these initial bedrooms? Kind of, I guess, on the first like twenty layers of the fortress before moving down eventually. So that was about two hundred and fifty years, and by that point, the fortress was basically almost turtled. Right, like you know, there's drawbridge at the front. Um, this was back when I had the population at I want to say thirty mm -hmm. dwarves. So that, you know, I could keep the FPS up. Because in those days, like, you know, there was not really a lot of optimization for FPS. So if I kept the dwarves at 30, I could get maybe 25 FPS after 200 years. And then, um, yeah, well, and then, of course, after 250 years, we dug down. And uh, that's when the real plan took place. Because all this time we were making clear glass blocks, like, for centuries. Because mm. I had an idea for the fortress, and like you know, that's that's where the real work started. Yeah, it 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 you know it's 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 like a Final Fantasy game. It only takes two hundred and fifty years for the game to get good. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but I, I I'm just kind of slowly moving through the first cavern layer right now, and there's a huge like kind of square reservoir over to the right. The spoiler of, of this whole fortress for anybody who isn't aware is like you've basically constructed the actual fortress in hell. And and, and I think like the the amount of effect that you've had on just the game in general, oh, I'm in the giant uh, square forest layer. Um, the, the, the amount of effect that you've had just on the game's culture is kind of, I think, almost impossible to measure because whenever I'm building a fortress that's even remotely long, and by that I mean like longer than 10 years, people just be like, now, now tame cave dragons. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I've I've literally seen two in my in, in separate worlds in my entire time playing this game. Yeah, I remember being so happy when I caught them too. I was like, "Oh, cave dragons, amazing! I'll breed them." And then looking up on the wiki, like everyone does, like, "Oh, drag! Oh, a thousand years! Oh, that's gonna suck." And then you know, it's like, oh, "Well, what if I did it? What if I did? What if I did it?" <laughs> um, moving through all of the. Uh, mind out layers as I kind of accelerate down through this fortress uh, in the second cavern layer, I would assume at this point. Yeah, the so the second cavern layer 80s. is pretty deep too, yeah. right? So like I had to build up through that, which honestly, it was kind of easier because I didn't have to dig at the same time. Like, you know, usually when you do, like I made a layer of the tower, you know, I'd have to dig out and then carefully channel out all the floor too to mm -hmm. make sure there weren't any cave-ins so like honestly I, I liked building through the caverns as long as there was nothing attacking me it was fine you did have water that you had to go through at the bottom of the caverns though yeah so again i had to pump magma on it you mm -hmm. know just to make it turn into obsidian and then dig through it so that was kind of a pain but you know eventually you get used to it and you know it's fine but uh yeah, no, I was more worried about, like, you know, giant bats coming in and interrupting, because, you know, when you have a uh, dwarf that gets interrupted making construction, it gets suspended, and it's kind of a bitch to find <laughs> which square it is that got suspended sometimes. I, I feel bad for this poor Gorlack that didn't make it in the water, uh, as well as all of the crumbles. <laughs> There's several Gorlax, actually. Oh, yeah, there's tons of Gorlax. <laughs> Lots of them Gorlax. died. <laughs> Continuing to uh, move down through through the layers, I'm in the uh, the third cavern layer now, the the deepest yeah. of cavern layers uh, again with water in it. I'm assuming the same process. Again, yeah. Um, so you'll see like obsidian kind of on the left there. So it was kind of easy to kind of pin drop magma and like block it off so that it didn't like. Mm -hmm get in so that you could like have kind of an empty section where the water couldn't get in and then you can just dig it out and it was fine but did, did you yeah, ever still... utilize magma buckets in this process or was it just like i didn't i pumps? just used pumps like i'm okay. i was so familiar with pumps it was just the easiest way for me mm -hmm. but yeah yeah 
All right, continuing to move down, and I'm seeing over on the right there's all the, the waterfalls, or I guess channeled water kind of flowing down. I'm assuming that's for power? Uh, that one is... Reservoir? That one's for the um, that one's for the waterfall on hell. So that's wow. for that was for irrigating the farms and then providing water for the wells down in the hospital. So I've the, made it um, down into the magma sea now. Um, yeah, I can see the the, the 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 waterfall flowing through the tower as well as uh, the lava flowing through the tower. Um, yeah, water on one side, magma on the other. Yep, yeah. and we are now moving. Ever so slowly down through the magma seas. So um, one thing that like really came up to me when I was reading the full story is like, okay, so how how the heck did you actually get through the semi molten rock and into hell? There was, um, of course, the adamantine spire, right? That's mm -hmm. how you originally got in. Um, but that's on the upper left, like they're all in the corners. Mm -hmm. So you can dig up through semi molten rock, um, but what happens is it'll reveal the squares around it once you dig up through it so you can't dig again. So I did use a DF hack command to get through the rest of the semi-molten rock because you technically can dig up through like a giant square of it, but you would have to get every single miner to complete their dig at exactly the same tick. So I didn't mind using DF hack for that just to like, you know, quicken the process instead of you know, spending hours trying to get all of these dwarves to like line up perfectly and, you know, probably wouldn't have worked anyway. Well, I did, I did pour water on it, like in the center part where the tower is, but you'd run into problems because you'd cause cave-ins because you'd get, you know, like a, a square block of obsidian and mm -hmm. it would have nothing supporting it. So it would just cause, you know, an instant, you know, cavern collapse basically, but you could make, you could connect it to the ceiling. So if you, as long as you did that, you could spread the water out and then dig down through it. But that's it's really hard too. So I've hit layer minus one thirty-five. This is the uh, crystal glass fortress in hell. Uh, where where do you want to start here? Well, there's the um, of course there's the magma forges and smelters and glass things all to the left. And I tried to spell arch crystal out there with dead. Uh, forgotten beasts, <laughs> but I, I couldn't find an R <laughs> or an A. Like, I needed an alligator and, like, a giant raven or something, but I could never find them. Then, then to the right's all the workshops, so, I mean, all your basic stuff. And then the main level has all the bedrooms, which is funny because, and you ran into this problem in Long Death, too, where after 400 years, the beds you made start to disintegrate from wear. Mm -hmm. And I never knew that was a problem. I remember encountering it because a bucket I had in a well uh, like deconstructed, and I couldn't figure out why. I'm like, what happened to this bucket? And I'm like, oh. You know, you check the, the X's on the wear, I'm like, oh, okay. Like, the wood wears down after 400 years. <laughs> never thought I'd have that problem, but did. And then if you go down the um oh the the people think that the bins are made of zinc or, or glass they're not they're zinc because they're the lightest metal um because i also had like the wooden bins i had would also start disintegrating so i'm like okay i want bins that last forever so i made them out of zinc because we had lots of sphalerite mm -hmm. uh ore in the fortress and then so you know they're light and they're the same color pretty much so they work um, and then down to the left corner is the library. Uh, and then to the right is all the temples. The big ones, the temple for everybody, and then the little ones are all like dedicated to their gods. Uh, over to the east above the temples, that's all the jail cells. I think See I'm poor a... Ming in there. <laughs> are, are, which layer? Oh, yeah, we're, we're currently uh, on uh, layer 135, correct? Or yeah, minus yeah, the main... Okay. Yeah. And so there's the jail cells off to the east there. And then there's Ming, the scholar. She's still in there. And then uh, there's all the cages up to the north. That's where I think there's Cyclopses, Minotaurs, basically all the beasts of the game uh, who eventually came to the fortress and got trapped, as well as mm -hmm. some goblins. You do have um, some R's in here. You, you, you could have moved some of those, but... Yeah, but they're not they're not flashing R's. Like they're, that's a they're rock. Not forgotten beasts, yes. You, yeah, you exactly. Know. And I'd have to kill my rocks and I didn't want to, because I like them. Oh true. Yeah. You don't you don't want your pet rock to 
<laughs> fall asleep. <laughs> um, but uh, n- now that I'm back on the correct zone, um, I don't even want to ask how many blocks are in this or how long it takes to open the stock screen. But how long does it take to open the stock screen? And have you ever uh, tried? Or does the game just crash? <laughs> Uh, good question. How do you open the stock screen again in this version? I can't remember now. Zed for status. Right, uh, yeah. And then, and then, and you, then you can arrow over. over to stocks. So yeah, you can open the stocks menu. Okay, so it's it's just, the, the problem here is uh, 10,362 blocks. Uh, or no, 103,000. It's 101,000. Yeah, 103,000. 103,162 yeah. blocks. Yeah, so if you arrow down to that, it would freeze the game. I want to say Long Death at Peak had about, it was like 40,000 blocks? It's still a lot. Like, I, I, And it took about eight minutes to load that screen like the, the the blocks menu which was particularly bad if i had to like scroll all the way down to the bottom of the or if i like there was two different ones i think it was like the thread and cloth and the con and then the blocks so if i had to go to something that was in between the thread and cloth and the block section of the stock screen the game would crash oh yeah but um yeah let, let, let's move down a layer and uh sure. e- explore a uh, layer 136 so um, this is the tavern in the middle here. Um, and then you've busy. got, yeah, you've got the magma on the left and the water on the right. Um, over to the very right, you'll see the museum mm-hmm. um, that's got over 400 artifacts in it, I think. Uh, I can't remember the exact number, but basically every artifact that was ever made is in there. Um, and then to the north, west is the throne room so this is where all the kings and queens have held court and you'll see two burning m's in the in the thing there so those are blood men and they're immortal that we captured obviously in the caverns and they're in artifact bone cages because i thought it would be cool to put blood men inside artifact bone cages but then you see the lava moat. I accidentally left the pumps on once and I overfilled it. <laughs> and so these artifact bone cages caught on fire. But since they're artifacts, they can't, you know, be destroyed. So they're just continually on fire <laughs> with these immortal blood men <laughs> inside, constantly boiling, I guess. And I thought it was really cool. So I left it. Uh, that's, that's almost like this one time I realized that I had a forgotten beast that anybody who picked up the body would burst into flames because it was made of fire. So I just like <laughs> had an aquifer above it and started the aquifer dripping on it and just had like this constant steam machine, <laughs> which awesome. was pretty good and forbid it. Uh, but yeah, that, that's this, kind of rad. Wouldn't the steam like melt people though still, or was it not that effective? I don't think steam does damage to people. I don't know. Like I've had steam in like per, in quite a few instances um, and never really noticed any damage, but. I could swear it used to. Like, maybe it used to. I remember but... Caves of Cud did that at one point. Did it? Okay. That maybe my, that's that what I'm f- thinking of. First time I died in Caves of Cud, I had flame hands, and I tried to kill a fish and died instantly to steam. <laughs> yeah, that's um, awesome. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> different game. Um, so, so I've gone uh, kind of south. I guess these are all just the stockpiles and then, uh, I guess, cooking-related workshops. I yeah, so that's stills. food and drink, and then uh, there's a few more jail cells down there and then um there's another dining room uh and then there's the hospital Mm -hmm. which is kind of in the center there you'll see the traction benches um Mm -hmm. the beds and stuff and then yeah oh to the very north east is um so those are all the forgotten beasts where they had bodies made of like you know stone or jam or whatever we couldn't butcher because you know you we used to just butcher the Forgotten Beasts and then decorate with all their bones and horns and stuff. But the ones we couldn't butcher, we put here. And right. just had them on display. I guess this is where you actually started constructing around the, the Slade in Hell. It was kind of nice having it, too, because, you know, you didn't have to put down so much glass, either. <laughs> you yeah. actually had some, some building material that you didn't have to make. Yeah, you'll see a lot of... These are all the offices, you know, with the tables and chairs and stuff. And then... You know, I kind of started running out of ideas, so I just threw a bunch of statues everywhere. In if you there? go, if you go to the south, or sorry, southeast, you'll see the um, the dragon 
uh, breeding grounds with mm-hmm. their yeah. um, egg nests and stuff. So that's how we bred the dragons. And it's great because like you don't, I didn't need the dragons to become huge. I just needed them to breathe fire, and like they breathe fire from babies, so you know that was fine. I and like then... that two of like some of them are named because yeah. I guess they had like history before they got there, and then the rest are just stray war dragon, <laughs> stray war dragon, masterfully <laughs> that's trained. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And that's obviously a training zone as well, so the trainers go in there. The only problem is like uh, I couldn't have military like see them because if a military member saw a mega beast they would instantly attack yes. so like it helped actually disbanding the military because i mean that wouldn't happen i don't does that happen in the steam version or did they I fix that i want to say they've just fixed that but i also haven't gotten a dragon since they air quotes fixed that to test it so i'm not yeah. sure and like yeah. you know a lot of things get fixed in dwarf fortress that still happens sure. sometimes so it's, it, it's, it's hard a to new say. feature now <laughs> yeah it's how do we and, work around uh, this quirk <laughs> and you'll see the slades engraved too so like i realized you could smooth and, and engrave slade which is great um because, you know, back in this version, you couldn't engrave construction. So I'm really happy in the new version you can, by the way. That's, uh, that's a big fix. And then, so you'll see in, like, the kind of the northern, west, northeastern kind of section. Um, so you see the water going down. There's more water beneath all of those glass grates. And that's where we fished. So it's really cool getting the message. There's no more fish left in the West Erie Cavern. <laughs> <laughs> the West Erie Cavern, because yeah. the game is capable of doing that. Yeah, that, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah, um, it's great. So I see a minecart route up here. Yeah. So like again, back when I had to disband the military, I didn't have any way of de- dealing with the demons at the front gate that would congregate. So I made minecart setup that would like launch coins basically at the demons and like rip them to shreds. But eventually, like like everything else, it just becomes such a chore. So, like, I think I, I took apart the rollers and stuff like that and just stopped using it and let the demons congregate because, you know, cleanup's a bitch too, right? Like, I didn't want to have to deal with it anymore. Winged Fiend Abdomen. There's a lot of these. <laughs> oh, you went down, did you? <laughs> yeah, I was looking at the, 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 the location of, like, where, where that was firing. So, yeah, was that just, I guess it was just full of, like, rollers then and then powered, I'm assuming. Yeah. And just yeah. With fire coins. Yeah, my, my, my go-to is generally serrated discs. I think, like, the, the, the issue with that would almost just be cleaning up the ammunition more than, than anything else. Yeah, well, like I said, the, the cleanup, I hated it. So, like, because, you know, eventually you don't want to do all that kind of stuff anymore. So. Yeah. Yeah, it just disbanded it, and then I think there's some, you know, there's some bolts left over from when they used to shoot them, but, yeah, that's it. All right, so I'm on, uh, I guess, 131 now, or 138, depending on where you scroll on the map. Um, yeah, so that's where the, the demons are at the entrance, right? The yep. body parts and stuff. Yeah, I'm looking at the demons okay, in the so entrance. There's not much left here. Because by the time I got down to this level, I was like, all right, well, kind of done. But to the right, you'll see the farms uh, on the east side. Mm -hmm. So back when I first brought water down into hell, you know, I had, you know, just a floodgate. That's an artifact floodgate, by the way, um, so that nothing could break through it. And just, you know, a lever that uh, um, poured water onto the slate. And so it made mud and you could farm and it was great. And then... I was like, okay, well, how am I going to get this water out of the fortress? Because, like, you know, I don't want to have a hole in the wall where demons could go through. So the water actually exits through a grate in the floor. And because, you know, like, for uh, demons and building destroyers, they can't destroy something that's above them. So that's how that drains out. And it's great because it drains out into one of those glowing pits and it's gone forever. (laughs) Yeah. No, the, the glowing pits are fantastic for trash disposal. They're amazing. <laughs> Never use magma again. And that's about it for this level, really. I mean, there was just a bunch statues, of... statues, yeah. Statues, yeah. If you go down one more... So this is the bottom. This is the absolute bottom of the fortress. Um, to the northwest, you'll see, um, like, a, in the slade floor, you'll see a, a slightly different color square on the mm-hmm. floor. Like, it's lighter. So that's when the that was the first staircase that we came down into hell and started to fight the demons. That's where the big 
battles took place. Um, and then if you deconstruct, you know, the constructions on top of Slade, it'll actually turn into diorite or else whatever biggest layer you have. So you can actually dig down through that if you want, but I mean, there's obviously nothing there. Let's see. To the center is uh, Fath. That's his. Uh, that's his library. That's where he does all of his necromantic studying and everything. So he was. He became kind of the main character of the fortress in the story because, like, eventually, you know, it's hard to kind of write a story like that where all the characters you like, you know, they eventually die, and like you have to. You have to get new ones, basically. So it was nice having Fath uh, become a necromancer because he could be, you know, kind of the 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 through thread for everyone to experience mm-hmm. the fortress. And then to the south and the center, that's the the trash room. It's just a lever hooked up to a um, a hatch, and then you put the trash on the hatch, and then just dump it down into those glowing pits, and they're gone forever. Um, and then southeast is uh, the hydras. So that's the main food of the fortress. So I caught hydras, I want to say like 300 years in, maybe, something like that. Bred them. I had to chain them up because if they got out and a military member saw them, like they would get ripped to shreds. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, they get slaughtered, I think like once every 10 years or so. And that's enough food for a decade. Then, then there's just typical Dwarf Fortress. They're just all going to get tired of uh, like e- eating Hydra meat, right? Right. Like, or they'll just never be truly satisfied. Thing. Because <laughs> yeah. like the way food worked in 47 was they, they wanted a particular animal. And it didn't tell you this, but they actually wanted a particular portion of a particular part of an, an animal. So it could right. be like, I prefer to eat lion. But what the game isn't telling you is, I prefer to eat lion spleen. Spleen. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Specifically. So... No matter like, how why are you tantruming? <laughs> decadent the meals are in this version. Uh, What's great about the Hydras satisfied. is they uh, they give you seven skulls, of course, because they have seven heads. Oh, of course. And you yeah. can make totems. So, like, the major um, export of Arch Crystal ended up being Hydra totems, and they'd be worth, like, thousands each. So you'd, you'd basically giving these caravans, like, hundreds of thousands of dwarf bucks worth of stuff <laughs> for, like, I don't know. What did I need? Like a lead bar here and there just to satisfy a, a strange mood. But yeah, that was fun. So since we're kind of at the bottom, is there, is there anything else you kind of want to highlight about this fortress um, at, at this point? Because like, I, I mean, re- reading through through the story recently was kind of lovely. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I think that like y- you've permanently affected Dwarf Fortress like community culture, regardless of whether or not like you intended to uh, with this story <laughs> yeah no i'm i'm very proud of it like you know i was saying it to my son the other day like proud to have made this and like people liked it and people liked the story it was it was nice to finally finish it and i i want to thank you for that because you sort of convinced me to because i had left i'd left the ending of the story up in the air and i was like ah, i should put an ending to it and just you know finally give it you know some sort of closure um so it was it was it was cool to do that but um yeah as for other parts of the fortress i mean there's the uh the tree farm i had to make which is like it's underneath the um the first cavern lair so let's see here i That's think if you layer push 38 already zoomed to it yeah so there's you saw that reservoir of course to the right and that's um so yeah that's water being drained out of the first cavern and into a big reservoir and if you go down you'll see levers in the the marble there and then right below that i had to make it you know several z levels high in order to get the water pressure Mm -hmm. and then i had to dig out i think it's four entire layers one two three yeah four entire layers of the map in order to make a tree i mean i didn't have to but i wanted to um and then after digging out this we actually used a cave-in basically so like just digging out and then not channeling and then so after causing the cave-in released the water and the water made the entire like underground forest Mm -hmm. because it was hard to get trees because you know on the top like you you have those clouds of wicked soot that come in through and you know they turn your dwarves into to mincemeat 
But yeah, that was that was the only other really cool thing I wanted to highlight, but that's about it. Well, I, I guess uh, now I, the, the easiest way to kind of wrap this up is to just state if anybody wants to mess around with this save file themselves or, of course, find the whole story of Arch Crystal, I will link to the forum thread uh, down in the description of this video where anybody can go find that. And uh, I, I, I guess the next and final question I have for this is, uh, do you plan on doing something like this again? Are we ever going to get a another story uh, about another fortress or is this just a one-off for you? No, so I've started, like when the Steam version came out, I actually bought it late, so I think maybe around February. Um, and then, so I started making a new fortress and it's made of ice. Because it never made fortress out of ice before and I found like a good evil ocean that freezes for three months out of the year where I can make it. So currently working on that, only at about year 50 right now, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see if it's story worthy. <laughs> we'll see if something right. comes out of it. Yeah. Well, in, enjoy enjoy building your James Bond villain castle. And uh, thank you. <laughs> th thanks a ton for uh, swinging by and uh, chatting with me in this video. Anytime. Thanks, Blind.